My border, gateway to the world. I have an idea worth spreading. And that idea is that we need to move from activism, although always be active, but move from activism to a binational border justice commission. El Paso, Texas, and Ciudad Juarez. Uh, sometimes those of us who live here think of it as the center of the world, or at least the center of North America. Me, I am a border person, a fronteriza, by adoption, not by birth. I've lived here for over 35 years. I came from the Midwest to come here to teach, do research, and write. Uh, and my border has opened a gateway to the rest of the world. You can probably tell from my Milwaukee accent that I still carry a little bit of the Midwest with me. This comes from the floor of the El Paso airport, where we have all these kernels of wisdom um, embedded into the floor, and uh, says Jesus, but this is absolutely true, that El Paso and Ciudad Juarez together form the largest binational community in the world. We have more than 2.5 million people who live here. Every day there are thousands of people who cross, and cross legally, to shop, to work, uh, and to visit with friends and relatives. Check this map from the El Paso Planning Department, which shows both of the cities and how close they are together. They literally hug each other. They sit side by side. But running through that big urban area is a borderline. And that borderline separates us. Two different governments, two sovereign countries, each with decision makers who make decisions about our border in the capital cities, in Mexico City uh, and in Washington, D.C., often not taking into account the interests of border people. The word border, la frontera, uh, has multiple meanings. One way of looking at the border is to see it as a barrier or a set of obstacles. Another way of looking at it is to see it as a bridge, not that TV program, uh, but rather an interdependent place with linkages, with joints, joined at the hip, as that former map showed. Or we can view the border as both of these things. We at the border are in search of democracy and good governance by border people, not by capital city politicians and bureaucrats alone. Check this picture, an aerial photograph, of the large binational border region with all these people who are continually going back and forth. Uh, in fact, uh, studies in the city show that people from Ciudad Juarez spend annually over $1 billion a year in our city, uh, and they create lots of jobs in our city. Yet, there continues to be fear-mongering from capital city politicians uh, and bureaucrats, and militarization on top, on top of structural violence at the border. And yes, indeed, we do have structural violence. We do have problems at the border. We have, for example, extensive poverty on both sides of the border. About one-fourth of our population in El Paso lives in poverty, below the poverty line, and almost one-half of the population in Ciudad Juarez lives below the Mexican borderline. We have extremely low wages. The minimum wage in the United States, $7.25 an hour, adds up to more than $60 a day by U.S. law, but the minimum wage in Mexico, in equivalent U.S. dollar terms, is only 4 to $5 a day, and that is by Mexican law. We have huge inequalities in this border location. In fact, border scholars looking at over 300 borders, landed borders, all around the world, have identified our border as being the 17th most unequal border in the entire world. The Washington, D.C. politicians and bureaucrats do very little in their term of border security to deal with this kind of structural violence. One of the problems also that we face would be the problem of long lines and waits for hours at the ports of entry. And then in between the ports of entry, the border fence or the border wall. And sometimes there's space between those border fences. Why? because politicians in Washington, D.C. 
measure the size of the fence, 800 miles of the 2,000-mile border zone now, they measure it by miles completed, not by whether or not the fence is contiguous. There are spaces in between in some places. <clears throat> I have learned a lot about other borders around the world from my border. Uh, in the Russian-Finland border that I visited last year, and this is a picture from that, we, there were shorter lines and, and shorter waits than at the El Paso Ciudad Juarez border. Another problem that we have is violence, and has been, has been alluded to before. Uh, during 2008 to 2012, uh, we, despite being the safest city in El Paso, uh, did have violence, extensive violence, on the other side of the border. But there has also been tremendous civil society activism for change. Uh, and that illustrates that border people have agency. They are active and they are trying to change their reality. One of the positive assets we have at the border is the creative linkage that occurs on both sides. This is a picture I took of a book that was developed in the El Paso Museum of Art uh, based on a binational border art exhibit, with the art museum on the Juarez side and the art museum on our side uh, showing pictures developed by creative artists and geniuses who use the hybridity of the border uh, to build beautiful pieces of art. Again, my border has taken me to other parts of the world, including uh, the border between Germany and Poland. This is a picture of the European University, Viadrina, uh, and my daughter in front of the uh, university. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is a university that is situated in, in Germany, uh, but has a requirement that 30% of the students must come from across the border. Uh, it celebrates internationalism and border crossing in the university mission. This is a city, uh, the city of Frankfurt Oder and Slubice, Poland, uh, where the border is genuinely a bridge across a river, the Oder River. Uh, and at that bridge, which, which I crossed, uh, there are no guards. People walk across, people bike across, uh, people drive cars across. In fact, this region is one of more than 30 Euro regions in the European Union uh, where institutions have been created, like the kind of commission I'm talking about, institutions that have mandates uh, from above, that share authority with border people and border voices, uh, and that provide financial assistance to do good things in border zones. Germans cross to Poland, and yes, indeed, there are lower prices on one side of the border than the other. Uh, and in this case, uh, I took pictures of the many shops that sell cigarettes, with signs, by the way, that say, cigarettes kill. Uh, but Germans cross uh, into Poland and buy cigarettes at lower prices, alcohol at lower prices, uh, and also gasoline at lower prices. Uh, and there still are inequalities between Germany and Poland, but they're not nearly as great uh, as they are in our region. Three to one inequalities rather than the 10 to one inequalities in minimum wage uh, that I talked about before. Some days I dream about a North American Union. Now would be the acronym. Uh, but could that happen now? Probably not. But we can make transitions toward uh, institutions like the Border Justice Commission, which have mandates and money. We have lots of activism, as I mentioned, perhaps more in Ciudad Juarez even than in El Paso. Uh, we uh, have a need for permanent institutions like a Border Justice Commission to move toward more democracy at the border, toward good governance at the border, with more than business voices. Uh, some of our business organizations at the border uh, charge thousands of dollars for membership. Most of us can't afford that. We do have some cooperation among law enforcement officials at the border, but they're not the only people who ought to be having border voices. Uh, we also have some cooperation uh, between um, um, governments. But ordinary people, uh, people in the health sector, in the environment, in education and so on, do not have much of a border voice on either side of the border. We need representation from all of those sectors health, human rights, education, environment, and human security, not just national security with a militarization tinge to it. 
we perhaps need to dream, think about the European Union and restore here what we experienced before the year 2000. There was movement, there seemed to be more respect, uh, there seemed to be more cooperation at the U.S.-Mexico border. We need to have public accountability with border vo voices. Uh, we need common policies about the environment and pollution to protect human health and to keep health care costs down. Uh, we need public investments in infrastructure, uh, in reducing poverty in the pockets of poverty that exist on both sides of the border. We need to reduce the inequalities that exist across borders to create prosperity for more people. Here is a picture I took in the Helsinki, Finland airport, uh, which tells us diseases don't respect border. Well, neither does pollution. Uh, and all kinds of other factors that we need to take into account. We need to move from barriers to bridges, and we need to move in two major global languages, English and Spanish. And we have some of that here. Uh, we have dual language programs in many of our educational institutions. We need to move from a region of global competitiveness, which often advertises low wages on one side, to include the goals of democracy and good governance and shared prosperity for many more people. Fair, not only free trade, but also fair trade, with living wages for workers on both sides of the border. We need accountable, effective governance that deals not only with trade, um, those people need to be at the table, but also health, environment, human rights, etc. If Germany and Poland can do this, former uh, enemies uh, during World War II, so can we. We can do this. Uh, this is a doable reform, a transition to more democracy and good governance. So let's do this. Let's create a binational border justice commission. Uh, let's have border voices involved, and let's share authority with capital cities to make a better border region. We need a mandate, we need monetary resources, and we can do this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>